A uh, source told me this. I don't know if it's true or false. So I want to confirm uh, with you. Did you go to Egypt with Aaron Rodgers? Oh, no. no I'm, I was not Egypt searching. Your source is mistaken, Zach. <laughs> Damn. Someone told me that. I was like, oh, maybe that would be fun. <laughs> Obviously, okay, I'm just yeah. kidding. Before someone goes, oh, uh, awful announcing, uh, John Kuhn uh, went to Egypt with Aaron Rodgers. I was just totally playing around. <laughs> uh, John Kuhn here with us. So last year, though, with Jordan Love, halfway through the season, I, I didn't know what the Packers had. I was rooting for Jordan Love because I loved how he handled – uh, the whole mess the last few years with Aaron Rodgers, which probably was an uncomfortable situation, but we saw him just take it to a different level down the stretch. When you look back at what Love proved at the end of the season, now knowing the contract that he got, uh, how far do you think Love can really take this thing as a pro quarterback in this league? Man, I, I'll tell you what, Zach, the, the sky's the limit with this kid. Um, the, the amount of work that he's put in, the amount of work that he continues to put in, and and really to me, these last four years have been an absolute roller coaster ride, and the guy hasn't blinked. He's never put a blip on the radar that would make you question his personality, make you question his work ethic, make you question his athletic talents. Never a blip on the radar. He's just gone through every hurdle like they weren't even there. And um, it wasn't always easy. Uh, some of the hurdles were big, and, he, and it took some time to get over them. Uh, for example, last year, 42 straight days without a victory. That's what the Packers had. And that's a long time. That's a long time here in, in quarterback land, as we like to call Green Bay now with, with what we think is our third, uh, really good quarterback in a row. So that's a long time to go without a victory, but never, never got beside himself, never got discouraged and just continued to put in the work to get better. And he did just that. He got very good, um, at the end of the year and the team grew with him, um, which is really the big reason for the turnaround. And that's what I think made the transition go so smoothly. Because you know what it's like, John Kuhn, to be in a, in a locker room. Uh, love uh, probably had opportunities, right? Reporters would love to hear him talk about how uncomfortable, right, maybe a situation was with all the drama surrounding Aaron Rodgers. He never spoke out of line. And even when things weren't going well early in the year, he didn't throw anyone uh, under the bus, at least from from what I was hearing any time he spoke. And I think that goes a, a long way and, and gains respect uh, with the young player in the locker room when you operate and conduct yourself like that. It, it absolutely does. And, and, and Zach, th this whole team, this roster in the last, let's call it, let's call it 18 months since, since they lost that game against the Lions at home to make the playoffs two years ago in Aaron Rodgers last year. This roster has been flipped. They've completely changed the wide receiver position, the tight end position, the safety position, the linebacker position. The majority of the offensive line, I mean, this roster, which was the youngest last year, remains the youngest this year in the NFL, and they're all growing at the same time. And that can galvanize a locker room to a point where it's not just we need Jordan Love to grow so that we can win. We all need to grow together. And that type of accountability, joint accountability that they've had, they've had at the end of last year, and they have continued going into this year, it's making for a very good locker room. And you look at the offense. I know Aaron Jones is no longer there, but Josh Jacobs is a heck of a player. Everyone's expecting big things out of Jordan Love. I, you know, I don't think they have a number one wide receiver right now, but you got a good group of wide receivers. The offensive line, I was talking to my buddy Mark Eckel, who covers the team. He's blown away by this offensive line. Like, I don't really see a big concern with this offense entering this season, John. It's, it's, it's amazing how... All of a sudden, Rasheed Walker, who was a big question mark or a downside last year, is now a positive for this offense. Zach Tom, who was a rookie last year, is now talking about could he make a Pro Bowl this year at right tackle. There's obviously a right guard battle spot going on right now between Jordan Morgan and Sean Ryan. But aside from that, the tight end position looks good. The wide receiver position looks good. Josh Jacobs is a premier running back that I think is going to have more space in his Packers offense than he ever had with the Raiders. I think that's going to be a positive for him. We're going to see a happy, kind of vibrant Josh Jacobs in that manner to be able to run through big gaping holes. And honestly, I, the notion of this no number one wide receiver, each one of these receivers has an attribute that a number one carries. There might not be one guy who has all four attributes, but Christian Watson has the, the world-class speed and size. Romeo Dobbs has the top-end hands 
and uh, and and want to like go after an ability. Jaden Reed is a guy that can go across the middle. He's kind of your you know jackknife kind of player. Can Swiss Army knife do a whole bunch of different things. And Dontavian Wicks is as good a route runner as they've seen here since since Devontae Adams. So they all have an attribute. And if you don't know which one they're targeting on play, it could actually turn out to be in the Packers' favor that there is not a clear number one. If you had to talk to Devontae Adams, I know that everyone thinks Devontae Adams, like a year from now, is going to get traded to the Jets. If he could have a do-over, you think he just would have stayed in Green Bay if he knew love was going to be this good? Well, it, that's tough to say because honestly, to play in the National Football League at, at a level he does, you got to be an alpha. You got to have no regrets. You got to have, you know, very thick skin and, and, and think that everything you've done throughout your career was the right way to do it. And he's going to be a gold jacket wide receiver when this thing's all said and done. But man, it, it, it's hard to look at what this Packers team has done and become in such a short period of time. I would be surprised if Devontae Adams didn't say at least sometime down the road here, man, I probably should have given it a try with Jordan Love. Mm, they could have a reunion still. I wouldn't say that that couldn't happen because a year from now, he's probably asking out. And uh, I think it kind of be smart by by Green Bay to try to go get him back. Jim. Well, but here, here's the problem. The, the Packers are so deep. They're going to have one of the wide receivers on their roster right now in training camp is going to be on a roster of another team as soon as camp's over. They don't have enough room for the number of guys that they have, and they're all on rookie contracts. They're all on rookie deals. They all have room to grow. They all have room to to reach higher levels than what they're at right now. To pay a wide receiver as much money as it's going to cost to pay Devontae Adams, I don't think is in the Packers' plans anytime soon. Talking to John Kuhn. Let's go to uh, defense. New defensive coordinator coming in, the former head coach Jeff Halfley at Boston College. Uh, how much better do you think this defense will be this year? Well, that remains to be seen. But the one thing that is very encouraging is is listening to the dialogue within the locker room, within the players, the assistant coaches. And the one thing that this really does is it really simplifies things. It's taking the 4-3, which – Everybody runs a, a a nickel four down version at some point in time, usually more than their base defense anyways. So it kind of mirrors the rules with the base D and the sub D, and it allows these guys to have more continuity within their zones, within their coverages, passing things off, and really being aggressive in the secondary while still having vision on their guys. If this defensive line, this defensive front, can play the way that they want them to play, meaning getting penetration and creating disruption on the way to a quarterback, I do believe that this defense could be one of the top-end defenses in the league because they got an all-pro guy at Jair Alexander. They have two Pro Bowl caliber players in Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary on the defensive front. And these young linebackers just continue to show their raw athleticism. They're young. They got new safeties. Xavier McKinney brings in a dynamic that they haven't had here in quite a bit of time. So a lot of newness, a lot of young and new defensive schemes. But if it comes together, this thing could be really, really good. And I know Packers fans realize it, but I think nationally people don't realize how good of an offseason the Packers have. Like you talked about McKinney on defense and bringing in Josh Jacobs. Uh, that's a, th Those are heck of, uh, of moves that uh, Gutekunst did pull off this year. Zach, let me let me say this. It's very rare to find a free agent in the National Football League that was a captain at their former team. That captain is a leader. That captain is a producer. You don't normally vote captains in who don't produce for your football team. And rarely are they not leaders because that's how you get to be the captain. So we got two of them. We got one on the offensive side and one on the defensive side. Both these guys, aside from having immense production their first couple of years in the NFL, were leaders on their football teams. They're going to bring that leadership to both the young offense and a young defense. And that is where the scary thing starts taking place. Then they everybody starts to follow in in their process. And the other thing I think is pretty interesting about this is they're both from Alabama at right about the same time. They kind of got that Nick Saban, you know, nose to the grind. We're going to come in here. We're going to work. We're going to get better mindset. It, it's feeling different. And it's I know 18 months can sound like a long time, but it seems like that where the Green Bay Packers were – Man, how do we turn this thing around? It seems like it's turned around and it's and it's passing where it was before. Well, that's the crazy part. It's like people didn't know last year, going into last year, what Lafleur was like without Rodgers. You know, Gouda Kuntz, everyone crushed him, including yours truly, um, on draft night, and he got this thing right. 
Uh, this organization, like I shouldn't be surprised, but I am surprised how quickly I'm I'm willing to say that they got this thing right with what they decided to do a few years ago. And I, I think there's a couple things you need you need to notice here. The Packers had always been draft best available, right? And and start developing them throughout the course of time. Goody in the last several years has really attacked positions. So I'm not saying he didn't take the best available, but he really targeted positions when you talk about tight end, wide receiver, inside linebacker, safety over the last two years. And it's not just the quarterback Jordan Love they got right. Look at his last two, three draft class and tell me who you see as not having value with where they were drafted. Then you go on the flip side and you start talking about Coach LaFleur. When you when you start coaching a young team, you can get more creative. You can find out more about yourself. I believe halfway through last season is when Matt LaFleur started to hit his coaching groove, his coaching prime. And now you got a coach that's in what I feel like could be his prime of developing game plans, calling plays. It's it's a little more open for him. And then uh and then running a team through practices. He's he's got his feet underneath him now. He's no no longer a young coach on a veteran team. He's now the veteran coach with a young team. And you got so you got the GM, you got the head coach. Now when this quarterback starts to hit where they because they they have groove in it now. If he starts to hit that groove, that starts to remind me of what this Packers team looked like, you know, late 2009, 2010, 2011 region. Do you walk into this year? Thinking, okay, this could be a team that could be playing on Super Bowl Sunday? Well, you you said could, and absolutely. I, I always believe there's about six to eight teams that are probably in a position that can make a Super Bowl. The Green Bay Packers are firmly in one of those six to eight spots. Comes down to a little bit of health, a little bit of luck. But when you got a quarterback that's on the top end, which we believe Jordan Love is, I believe you really have an opportunity. Plus the NFC Kind of looks like it could potentially be not quite the uh, the juggernaut that the AFC is right now. And this division, though, is really damn good. And I I think the Lions <laughs> are going to win the division, but I, I will even say I feel like everyone thinks it's a given that the Lions win this division. I can't dismiss Green Bay for maybe making a run to go win this division. Yeah, uh, the Bears have gotten better with their defense finishing – you know, one of the top defenses in the league the second half of the year just took them a little bit to get rolling. You knew those pieces they added last year were going to be great. And now that they got Montez Sweat, they pose a, a, a real formidable opponent when you talk about all you got to do is get your quarterback on the same level with some of those weapons that are out there. Chicago Bears are going to be very good, too. And then Minnesota can always be a thorn in anybody's side. I, when you we talk about the Super Bowl contender, and you look at the big three probably right now in the NFC, most people would say uh, it's the Eagles, it's the 49ers, and it's the Lions. Do you think they're better than any of those those three teams I just mentioned, John? I, I think they are going to show people that this year. I, I really do. Um, there's obviously a part of the season, and it's usually like the first four or five games, where teams that look like they may look at the beginning of September look dramatically different in October. And I think the Packers got the makeup so that – Whatever they look like at the beginning of October, that's the team you're going to have to deal with. It's kind of the way the NFL is now. Training camps are shortened. Preseasons are not as many football games. So it takes the first couple weeks of the season before you see a team's medal. And I think the Packers got what it takes to be one of those top teams in the NFC. I know you said the sky is the limit for Jordan Love. How how much in love are you with Love? Like, we know Rodgers... Going to be a Hall of Famer, 1-1 Super Bowl. Favre, Hall of Famer, 1-1 Super Bowl. Like, Do you look at Love as a guy that maybe could win the Packers multiple Super Bowls one day? And it's so hard. But I will go out because I'm not afraid of making predictions. I'm not afraid of receipts coming back on me. I do believe Jordan Love will get the Packers to another Super Bowl. Then anything can happen. I do believe he's a guy that's going to get the Packers to the Super Bowl. And then I would say – He's going to compete for an MVP in this National Football League. 